All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ron and behind me is my 2018 Subaru WRX. So we're gonna be installing this compressive tuning smart airflow shroud uh, that I got from uh, Rally Sport Direct. What this is supposed to do is, I'll show you here. So according to compressive tuning, it's supposed to direct air from the grill straight to the scoop to your intake so that you get more air going into the intake. And um, I also have the compressive tuning fender shrouds right here, which I installed not too long ago. And I guess all of it combined is supposed to direct air from the front through the sides and whatnot and stuff like that. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I thought it'd be a cool upgrade just to have. And I know a lot of people are thinking that if I direct air through here, to the intake then water might get in there believe me that was a concern of mine as well but i checked compressive tuning site and they can guarantee that water will not get in to the intake they designed it that way so your intake stays dry that said we are going to start the install i'm not going to show you guys how to re remove the front bumper just because there's a bunch of videos out there online showing you how to do so one of which is subi bros's video so check that out and Sorry, the garage is a little messy right now, but this big box right here is just a front lip that I purchased. Uh, same one as the last time, the one that I had on before, but that one got destroyed uh, when we had the snowstorm a few months ago. So I just got the same one just because I didn't want to poke new holes on the bumper. So we'll be installing that as well. And it's kind of a hassle because I have fog lights coming in, but they're not here yet. So I'd have to do everything separately and take off the bumper again which i hate doing it doesn't take that long but i hate doing it so anyway i'm gonna do an unboxing let's go open that up and i'll show you guys what it looks like all right guys i hope you have a good visual here uh so just open the box get some instructions and i ended up with the yellow shroud uh i think they have this available in silver red i believe and black screw and some washers, sticker, and here we have the actual pieces. Okay, so if you guys can see that, I thought it was gonna be the shiny yellow, but it's uh, textured, which I don't mind, I kinda like it. And I know it's gonna look out of place, but I have a plan on why I got the yellow. I'm glad I did. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here. So we have three main pieces. Uh, this one right here, after I remove everything, goes on the top. And then you have this piece that goes right here. And this should guide the air from the grill through the intake. And this creates a seal for it on top, which is kind of sick and I really, really like it. Good color combo so far. And this piece just goes on top some, somewhere here so it completes the seal and everything just goes into that intake. So one of my main concerns with this kit is this piece right here that goes just behind the grill. Just because I do have the parent hella horn bracket and I'm not sure if it'll be in the way, but we'll just have to see. If this does happen to be in the way, then I'm just gonna have to figure out a way to mount the horns. And then before we're done, I'm gonna go and install that front lip again. Let's get started. So that took a little longer than I expected just because I have uh, my TBW skid plate so I couldn't just pry it out but now that we got it off it is time to mount the shrouds so let's go ahead and do that. So we're, we're going to start with the uh, driver's side. There's going to be five bolts holding in the upper reinforcement bar on each side. I'll show you guys where they're at. So there's going to be one, two, three, four and then the fifth one which is just right here on the top. Let's go ahead and do that. So the next step after you remove the upper reinforcement bar, you wanna go ahead and remove these radiator brackets. There are two of them, one on each side, and they are uh, 12 millimeters. I guess I could have done this in, in the uh, beginning steps, but remove the stock shroud 
and just set that aside. You're gonna want access to these bolts right here. So these are two 12 millimeter bolts. One is on the latch and then one is on the uh, left side of it. And so for this piece, we're actually gonna be replacing it and instead using the supplied Allen bolt. So here is one of my concerns. So after removing the two 12 millimeter uh, bolts, the next step would be to install this. So this goes just right above that horn right there. So if you guys can see, it's hitting on the top of it. And uh, so I guess I gotta figure out what to do. It's already maxed at the lowest setting. And this is the Perrin Hellahorn bracket. So I'm not quite sure how this is gonna work. Um, I guess I can tilt it, so we could try that. I'm just gonna do a trial and error moment here. So yeah, this is uh, right there. It's hitting right above it, so. Oh, that's a bummer. So I'm just gonna temporarily secure this upper shroud here uh, with the bolts. So this is the 12 millimeter bolt that I took off um, on the left side of the latch. And then the other one, as I mentioned, is gonna be replaced with this uh, Allen bolt. And there's actually two sets of washers in here, a skinny one and a larger one. I'm gonna use the larger one for this bolt just to hold it in here temporarily until I figure out the fitment for the Hellahorn bracket. Okay guys, it took me a little while, but I think I figured out a solution. So, if you happen to have the param bracket, uh, pay attention just because this took me a little while to figure out. So, first thing I did was I removed the two horns on each side right here. These are just held in by uh, two 13 millimeter nuts and just remove those so you have the bracket freely. So it's a little hard to see, but this thing mounts on here two bolts right here, one and two, and I tried angling it right here to the point where it was crooked, just so I can get this in place just like this, but that wasn't working. So what I figured out was, uh, I just remember there's an extra slot right here on the left side of the latch. So what you do is you take your bracket, flip it this way so that the parent is upside down. basically just want to remount your horns each side all the way to the bottom and if you take one of the 12 millimeter bolts that should work I think this will be a good temporary solution for now but again I'm probably gonna want to address this in the future So just to recap on what I did with the Perrin Hella horn brackets, I literally just uh, flipped it over uh, so the Perrin symbol is upside down. That way it'll give this more room uh, right here just because earlier I had to tilt it as far up as I could to where it was even more crooked than this. But this should do for now. Uh, I also thought of something. If you wanted, you can also measure and put a hole right there so you can utilize both of the bolts but for me I just did one and um, it's pretty secure on there it's not gonna move so now that that's done oh my gosh I'm glad I'm glad that kind of worked out it's probably not the ideal solution but this is what we came up with so let's go ahead and tighten these two bolts down and then move on to the next step
All right, so after you get the bottom tray secured, next step is to go ahead and install the upper radiator shroud. In order to do that, you wanna lift these radiator brackets off and just move them to the side for now. And then you simply just uh, slip this on like so. So after you slip that on, go ahead and put back the radiator brackets. And then you wanna secure the radiator brackets with the two 12 millimeter bolts that we removed from the earlier steps. Once the upper shroud is uh, installed, you wanna go ahead and reinstall the upper reinforcement bar. Okay, so one thing to note, this bracket took me a really long time to put on just because this piece right here, I was shoving it under, but Please remember when you're installing the reinforcement beam that you put this on top of the actual shroud. Then that way everything will pop into place and um, yeah, now we can move on to the next step. And the last piece that needs to be installed is this flange right here. So it just simply goes right where the, um, so you see the compressive tuning badge right there. It goes right here under this bracket. I need two hands for this, give me a sec. So back to what I was saying, it goes under the bracket and then you simply just wanna throw a pop clip in there. That should do it. The install is now complete. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything put back. Um, I have an additional thing to do just because I have this Password JDM um, carbon fiber shroud or cover, whatever you wanna call it. But I was also worried that it wouldn't work with this, but it, thank God it does just because I did not wanna get rid of that thing. It just looks sick. So yeah, I'm gonna put everything back together, um, install this front lip and then get the bumper back on. Then I will give you guys my final thoughts on this. All right, so actually a slight change of plan. I'm gonna leave the bumper off for now just because the fog lights that I have coming in are gonna get here on Wednesday and there's really no point in putting it all back together just so I can take it out again. So for now, we'll leave it as is. It's a bit messy in here and I'm almost losing my shit, but I'm gonna <laughs> clean a little bit to make myself feel better. But yeah, final thoughts on this thing. I mean, if it does truly work, then I'm all about it. Uh, is it worth, you know, the hassle of removing the bumper, the front brace, just to install it? That's up to you. Um, for me, you know, I would probably do it again, to be honest with you. Uh, the only reason why I'm having a hard time with the bumper is because I have a skid plate under there that kind of connects to the bumper. Other than that, it's supposed to be super easy. I'll have to trust compressive tuning when they say that water will not get in there. I trust that they do all the research and all the engineers do a bunch of testing and stuff like that. So hopefully it's right. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. I'm glad I got the yellow just because you can see it through the grill. I mean, once it's on there, obviously, and then it just sticks out. Kind of funny how you start an install and your garage is clean, but at the end of it, everything is a mess. So I am gonna get this place cleaned up and then get some dinner, hopefully edit some videos. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and close out the video here. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you made it this far throughout the video, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.